What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where you already know we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Got that spanking monkey on today. That's right. Monkey. That's right. Uh, uh, big Ain't it, man. So, man, I ran into this dude when he was at the Ian Bix show. We were there on the same day. He reached out to me, man. He's got a little channel that he's trying to get, you know, up and jumping. So I'm going to ask everybody, man, check out his links in the description. But we're going to get into his story. He's been in some places that I've been to. He was at USP Lee. I think we'll discuss something about the armed guys, Aryan Resistance Militia, when they had kicked um, a Border Brothers head off their shoulders. But anyway, we'll get into all that stuff today. Tell the people who you are, Jamie, and let's talk a little bit about you. What's up, man? My name is Jamie Foltz, uh, federal inmate number 10290084. Um, I've been home from federal prison for, I don't know, if, since 09. So what's that give me? Like 13 years out, man. I'm a tattoo artist now. Been tattooing on my own for about two years. Um, but yeah, man, just trying to stay out, stay clean, and keep it moving, you know? That's what's up, man. Look, you know, I just mentioned that Ian Bick thing. We'll get into your prison experience and all that in a minute, but okay. when I ran into you guys up there, man, I seen your thing said spanking monkey, and I was like, what the f- What's going on that? So tell the people what the spanking monkey is or how that even started, bro. Right on. So it's kind of like two different things involved there, man. I, I feel like we're all savages, bro. At heart, we're savages. That's where the monkey thing comes from. But it's also, dude, I'm a clown. I like to laugh, man. Um, I grew up around a bunch of misery. My old man was just a miserable person. Negative, negative, negative. So I fight every day to not be that. And part of that is spanking monkeys, you know. And the sticker says I'd rather be spanking my monkey because it's just, you know what I mean? It's funny. Anytime I hand out the sticker, I instantly get a laugh. I get a little bit of you know what I mean? Love from the stickers and the shirts, man. That means a lot. Yeah, man. Just, uh, you know, stick to your own monkey. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Exactly. Right. Don't touch my monkey. We're good. I'd rather be spanking my monkey. Not I'd rather you be spanking my monkey for sure. Oh, good. But anyway, man, I know you end up going to federal prison, right? Tell me a little bit about that case and how that happens. Okay. So uh, it's 1998, man. Oxycontin is the thing, bro. That's what's going around. We end up getting a few crooked doctors that get us rolling on oxys. You know what I mean? If you've watched any of the updates on it, that shit's crazy. Um, so we get to a point where we don't have no money. We're down and out, man. We've been talking about robbing this pharmacy for years. We have been uh, kind of planning out our head, talking about how we would do it, but we just never had the balls to do it. It got down to the point where we didn't have no pills. We didn't have no money. We was down and out. So that's what we did. Um, so we rolled up in there and took oxycontins from them, man. No guns or anything like that. We just went in there and forcefully, like, give me all the Oxycontins, bam, bam, bam. You know, we was high as shit. I wrecked my car three times that day. Um, but we took every Oxy they had in there. And here's the thing that's crazy about it is I'm in a pharmacy, and the only thing I take is the ox. Like, it's a fucking pharmacy, bro. There's everything in the world in there, and the only thing we were concentrated on was the ox. Grab the Oxys and bounce, man. What were you at that time? I'm sorry? How old were you when you did all of Shit, 20, I think I was, when I did it, I was probably 21 or two. And then it took five years for the feds to catch up with me. So the state started a case against me and all this stuff because I dropped my mask when we were leaving. So as I'm leaving, I dropped my mask, right? So they come and get hair follicles from me and my co-defendant while we're in on another case, which is about a year after the robbery. So now all this just goes away. We get out, we're doing our thing or whatever, but this robbery's all the way, you know, it's always there in the back of my head, man. I know I did this. I know they got my hair follicles. I know I dropped my mask. So when the state got it, the state couldn't convict us because my hairs weren't in the mask. So somehow, some way, someone else at Walmart where I stole the mask when I made it um, had a hair in the mask. So they was trying to match that up to me or my co-defendant, and they couldn't match it up. So state dropped it. Feds picked it up. When the feds picked it up, dudes that we had been messing with for years snitched on us. So when they lined up to tell, you know, they had 80 years. They snitched their time down to the one dude did like three months, and the other dude did like a year and a half. They snitched away 80 years for interstate transportation. So that got me six, got my co-defendant six. Let me ask you this. You know, you're, you're 20, 21. You're getting high at this time. Oh, yes, absolutely. So I started smoking weed, 16, 18 years old. Probably took a first Percocet by the time I was 18 or 19. Um, back then, it was Percocet, Vicodin, and Valium. That was the thing. And then when Oxycontin hit, man, that was a whole nother thing because you're talking about as many as 32 of these pills in one pill. You know what I mean? And that's that's just a crazy overload of opiates in anybody's system. 
me ask you this, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of kids ended up dying and, you know, this whole opiate thing. And, you know, you just, you're right into the fentanyl stuff now, but back then, you know, like what was your, I mean, you're a young dude, bro. You're not concentrating on chicks. You're just what, you know, doing, doing the Oxycontins and I guess spanking the monkey. I mean, and partying bro and partying. Yeah. That's what it was. Like, I mean, I had it, I had a girl, you know what I'm saying? I had a girl I was with, I had two kids. Um, but when you're on that shit, bro, it's, uh, it's like you're a different person. And like, it changed me completely who I was then and who I am now or who I am using and who I am clean is two totally different people. And that person right there would do anything for that shit, man. Just because it's that monkey on your back, it's steering you. I got tattoos of Loki and Odin on the sides of my neck. Cause that's my good and my bad. And that Loki's always over here trying to tell me to get high, bro. It's always trying to make me react like a criminal. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to do that. An addict, a criminal wants me to do that. And I got to, I got to listen to this side. You know what I mean? You walk into federal prison. I mean, you end up with this six year sentence. You're going to prison for robbing the pharmacy. What, I mean, when, what's your first prison? It was, uh, first prison I walked into was Lee County. So I went straight to the penitentiary from my county jail, you know, through a little diesel therapy down the way. Um, and as soon as I walk in, they sent me down by myself. So there was like 75 people on our case. So they kept all of us separated. Everywhere I went, there were separations. on. Um, so they kept me in one car, moved me to this jail, that jail by myself. And then they moved me into the jail by myself. So, bro, you're walking in there. You're not on a bus. You know what I'm saying? You're walking in on the bus. There's attention at other guys, not just you. But I walk in there by myself. I'm brand new. Never been in the penitentiary. Never did state time in the penitentiary. I'd done jail time, but I'd never been to the penitentiary. I mean, people that don't know you, I've seen you in person, man, when we were at that Ian Big show, like I mentioned. Um, you're a pretty big dude, right? How big are you? I'm six foot six, 260 right now. Um, but when I went into prison, I was I could never get over 220. And I worked my ass off. As soon as I went, and my dedication was to grow my intelligence and to grow my body. That's what I wanted to do the most. I wanted to get smarter and learn how to stay out of prison. And I wanted to get big, bro, because I went in, I was 155 pounds. 155 at six foot six. That's not good, bro. And that's from the drugs. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as I start using it or anybody sees me use it, boom, my weight comes off and you know it immediately. You know what I mean? Because I stay in the gym. I stay working out. I stay trying to take care of myself as best I can. I mean, I smoke a little weed. I drink a beer too, but that's it. You're kind of a big old boy now, but, you know, back then you were too thin to win, too light to fight. You're going into this, you know, maximum security federal prison. There's always these stories about federal prison's a nice place. But you go to USP Lee where it's kind of, it's it's dangerous. You're over there with AJ and I think Raz was over there. A yeah. bunch of Aryan resistance, militia guys, armed guys. You know, you're a young kid. What's it like when you walk in there? What are the white politics like? I mean, do they approach you right away? Because you were with some serious dudes. bro. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I had got a little bit of schooling in county jail from one dude that had been to the pen. So I knew a little bit about what was going to happen when I walked in. So when I walked in, of course, first thing I do, bro, is I know I didn't tell. I know everything I did straight up. I, I got a serious crime that's not a fucked up crime. So I go straight out to the yard. I put my shit on my bunk and I walk straight out to the yard. Where's the white boys there? And I go out to them two tables by the volleyball court. You know where they're at. I just introduce myself. Like, what's up? I'm Jamie. Here's what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? How shit work around here? You know what I mean? I just, that's went from there, bro. And where are you from, man? West Virginia? No, I'm from Virginia. I'm from Winchester, Virginia my whole life. You're from Virginia. Is there a white Virginia car when you walk into USP Lee? So, no, no. So uh, most of the guys that were the white guys that were in any kind of car, I remember it was two guys, one dude, uh, Jamie, and one dude, Tracy, was from uh, like Richmond way. So they hung out with the black cats more, you know what I'm saying? Still cool with all the white dudes, but at the same time, they sat, they would sit at the white section, and then sometimes they would not, you know what I mean? And Which was all good, but there was no VA car full of white dudes, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't enough white dudes there in any state for them to have a call. I want you to kind of tell the people what it's like, though. I mean, do the white dudes approach you like, yo, bro, this is what it is. Give us the rundown on federal prison. I mean, I know how it works, yeah, but yeah. the viewers might not. Yeah, so everything's based on race, especially in the penitentiary. Um, you know, you're not, it's not that you can't deal with them like, say, California, I've heard. Um, but at the same time, too, the white boys have a section where they're going to eat. The white boys have a section on the rec yard where they're going to hang out. Uh, there's TV rooms in every block. So every block for the ones I was in always had like a Mexican room and then they had four or five black rooms and then they had one white room because, you know what I mean? It's just different culture, man. 
like you know white people like different music than black people black people like different music you like uh different movies there's different things you want to watch and then also you got people that don't like sports bro i'm not a big sports guy i'm not down for all that screaming and yelling and shit just because somebody you know made it three inches over a line i don't like that i want to sit in this room over here where we could watch something else and you know that's that was, i, I kind of like that part of it because you know it, everybody got to hang where they wanted to you wasn't forced like you are in county jail where there's 37 people around one tv everybody wants to watch something different so the politics of it makes it work better and the same thing too the politics was that uh, white and black couldn't fight like that was one of the biggest things on that yard. They did not want a white dude and a black dude to fight, period. Because if you did, now we're on lockdown, bro. Like the one time that they did, I don't know if you heard about this story, but it's the time that Shane got stabbed up and that Jason was running around to running his mouth. Bro, I was there for that, bro. We was locked down for like 10 days. Yeah. And it's just because they went at each other. So normally the way it would be taken care of is if white dude and black dude had an issue. Black dude or white dude would go to their car, go to the white guys or go to the black guys, whoever they was in with, and then you had to take care of it in-house. Like, you would go into a cell and get your ass whooped, or you would go into a cell and whoop their ass. You know, I see some dudes I see some dudes fight back, and I see some dudes not fight back. Like, I know one buddy of mine, man, he just went in there and took a fucking beating, bro. Like, swole up, and he was fucked up for a week and a half. He couldn't come out to cell. You know what I mean? Because he comes out to cell, they're going to ask him what happened. Talk a little bit about Shane, because I know Shane personally. I was over there with him. Are you talking about the time when he got Bercy flighted out of there? Yes. Yes. That was when he had his whole back cut open. So what had happened was, so somebody come down with some wine. I think it was in K block too, man, because I was in J block. So he was in block his whole bit. Huh? He was in K block his whole bit. No shit. Where's Shane at now? I want to say he's in Polak. Tell the people about what happened with Shane when he gets his back cut open and asked. So, yeah, so Jason starts drinking. Jason's running around the block, and it's N-word, N-word, N-word. So next thing you know, all the black dudes come together, not just one click. Like, they come together like, bro, we got to shut this shit down. So Shane stopped trying to stop Jason from running his mouth. He's trying to put him in a cell and chill him out. He can't get it done. So they lock him up. They take a lock to him. They take a, a knife or a shiv to him. They take a couple cuts to him. Shane's trying to break it up. Shane gets mixed up. Somehow he got cut all the way down his back, bro. I think it was like 58, 59, 60 staples, something crazy. Uh, they take Jason and move him out of there. Well, Shane ends up in the hole, you know what I'm saying? Now we're all politicking, even the black dudes, the Muslim dudes. Everybody likes Shane, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to the warden, we're going to the captain every day, let Shane out. Man, when Shane finally got out, bro, he could barely walk. Like, I mean, he was just like limping around, you know what I mean? But, uh... He was a good dude to the fact that he shouldn't even have been out on that day, injured like that. You know what I'm saying? But since everybody wanted him to come out because he was trying to do the right thing, he was trying to shut this dude up. Dude got fucked up for what he should have got fucked up for. You're disrespecting the whole prison. You're supposed to get your ass whooped. Shane was just trying to help. Once everybody figured that out, you know what I mean? It made peace. And I remember for that right there too, man, they took all of us at that time when we was locked down. And they went block to block and took one white dude and one black dude out of every block. And they took us to the captain's office or to the uh, chapel. Captain was in there. SIS was in there. They had us all cuffed. And they had one on each side. So they took me and this dude red from my block. Now, I'm not patched up. I don't have none of that affiliations or anything. But I'm a leader, bro. That's just who I am. I get in that position. I can't help it. So they pull me out. And they tell us this is what happened. He got fucked up. He got fucked up. What are y'all going to do about it? They want to know if there's going to be a riot. White dudes, matter of fact, it was DJ at the time. I don't know if you heard about him, but he's like, you know, nah, there's no problems. There's no issues. We went back to the block. We tell everybody what happened. We come out of lockdown. Shane comes out a couple weeks later. Yeah, so, you know, Shane went to prison young, had like 40, 50 years, felt like he was never getting out. He became an alcoholic in prison. Wild dude, I was there when he locked his door and the cops couldn't get in. They had to come over there. They had to... uh take his door off they had to have maintenance come take his door off yeah, because he shit. locked himself into the cell um and you know he gets mercy flighted out of that prison almost loses his life yes over trying to intervene I, I wasn't there at that point when that happened but i ended up coming there later and i ended up becoming friends with shane yeah. so tell the people who cut up i mean you don't have to say specific because people might be under oh he's snatching mother and honestly bro i really don't know who cut him you know what i'm saying like I'm, i just know that the black dudes got in there and did their thing you know what i mean uh, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what... Today the black, I mean the black dudes cut his, cut him open with a street razor, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fuck him up good too. 
people are like, damn, they got street razors in prison? Yeah, they got everything. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's everything in there, bro. Yeah, there's nothing that you can't get inside one way or the other. You got to think people are going in and out of there every day. I don't care if they got that badge on their chest or not. They're going in and out of there every day, and they're bringing shit in. You know, in, in the story that you just told, you know, I'm going to do a video probably tomorrow about um, USP Pola. Okay. okay. This uh, black D.C. dude just stabbed the white dude um, about four or five days ago. So, you know, they talk about this no hands policy where blacks don't put your hands on whites. Whites don't put your hands on blacks. Mexicans don't put your hands on blacks. Same thing. But it doesn't always go that way. And that was a, you know, a situation where it didn't go that way. And a dude that was trying to intervene ends up getting mercy flighted and almost loses his life. Right. Yeah, exactly, dude. And all he was trying to do is help. What's it like for a young dude like you, you know, you're from Virginia, not really, you know, never been to the penitentiary, to see the level of violence like that? What's it do to you mentally and emotionally? Uh, it definitely changes who you are, bro, for sure. Uh, I never go and sit anywhere with my back to everybody anymore. That type of shit right there just stops. And even though I've been out 12 years, that's something that you don't stop. You don't stop hearing shit. You don't stop being aware of what's going on around you. Um, that's the biggest thing. You can feel the tension on the yard like that. But that's also something you learn. Like, when I went in, I didn't know none of that shit. I was green as hell, bro. I was a criminal and I was an addict. But this prison shit was a whole new thing for me. I'm a skinny kid. I'm not, I don't like to fight. That's just not my thing. Some people do, some people don't. So that's not me, man. I want to laugh and kick it and have fun. I'm not a violent person. I'm just not like that. So like I said, you were around AJ. AJ was a, a major, major leader of the Aryan Resistance Militia, 1488. Mm -hmm. just a, and to look at him, you would think, nah, bro. But, um, you know, he, he lived this, he lived the life that you see in movies. He, you know, he used drugs in prison. He got drunk. He committed extreme violence. You happen to be there when he gets into it with the Mexicans. And eventually, you know, anyone that walks into USP Lee, they run into Warden, uh, Warden O'Brien. And he would tell that story about AJ and about the boots and don't kick no one with no boots on my yard. And, you know, he tells you how much time he got. He got 10, 10 years, 11 years. And he'd tell you, whatever size boots you wear, that's how many years I'm going to get you. So let's talk a little bit about that, man. Let's talk a little bit about them white politics and, you know, what happened with AJ and the border brother. Yeah, so that right there was definitely one of the craziest things for me because I'd only been in about two, maybe three months when this went down. So somehow something goes down in the hole. These border brothers are told not to give a knife to someone. They give the knife to someone. Now they get out. So now these dudes, and again, I'm new to all this. I don't know nothing about it, but now they want to get these border brothers. So AJ, and there was another motherfucker that come in, and they, they hit me up. They're like, yo, these dudes are in your block. I'm going to come into your block in the morning. We're going to hide out in a cell. And then when they come out, you know what I mean? Get them away from the CO. We're going to fuck them up. So they do all this. Well, while they do this, AJ goes ahead and takes a couple of fingers of tobacco and puts them up the old poop chute. So now we're in there and he's getting all this shit done. Well, you know, and you got bubble guts, bro. Got bubble guts. So he takes a shit, shits all the tobacco and everything out. Now it's a wrap. He don't want to go to the hole because he don't have the tobacco. So they're going to do it again the next day. So the next day comes up and I got Unicor work call. By chance, bro. I don't know how, but I got one Unicor work call, which is 730 before any of this shit happens. So I'm at Unicor now. So then they take this cat, Dylan, that was in the block two, and they kind of put him in the place that I was in. Shit doesn't go down or whatever in the morning. We go to work. Everybody goes to chow. And then after chow, you know, you go back to work, and then boom, the deuces go off. You know, get down to ground, whatever, all that shit. We're in Unicor, so I don't really know what's going on. I can't see it, but I know what's going on because I know what's going on. So uh, they take us out, man, and, you know, after all the lockdown and all that shit, I think we was on lockdown for a couple of days. Um, but them boys got out and they fucked them up, man. The helicopters came in. They had to be life flighted out of there. Uh, yeah, they definitely put the boots to them. That was AJ and then Nate and Mike. And little Mikey was the little gangster too. Don't get it fucked up. Little Mikey that was in there with them. He was a G too. Um, but long story short, after they stomped them out, fucked them up, uh, you know, all but killed them. Um, they charged them all. Dylan ended up telling. I think he only ended up with like a couple months or some shit. And then AJ got like nine or 14, Raz got like nine or 14, and then I think Mike got like five or six, some shit like that. I mean, all this is right on camera, bro. You know, they had everything they did right on camera. Yeah, but let's talk a little bit about that. You know, like these dudes in the, in the politics, you know, they don't really care about getting more time to act like they don't. They don't care about the camera being there like, hey, man, this is just prison. This is how it goes. And this is what we signed up for. We're gang members and you know, someone violated, you know, obviously with the with the knife situation, according to them, they violated prison politics. 
and they went out there. They didn't care about race or anything on, on that occasion, right? Yeah, yeah, that, it wasn't about that, bro. It was like, uh, this has been done, and we're soldiers. It was like they had been issued a fucking order, and they were handling that shit. Wasn't nothing going to stop them. If it took 10 days, they was going to get to it. And they didn't care about nothing else. It's like, that was that was crazy to me because I only went in with five, six years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a year off of my six-year bid. I only had five years left. And then when all this shit's going down and I realize that them cats got all that time, that was, that was my fucking hold up. Let me step back for a second, bro. Because I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? I got kids. My daughter was only like a year old, bro. I'm trying to go home. So I separated myself a lot at that point. Like I said, I mean, you're, you know, you're a pretty tall white dude. Um, People might look at you. You got the American flag. You got the beard going. I, I think you got the oldness thing going. You know, any of these dudes ever tried to tip you up? Like, yo, bro, you know, you ought to be a part of this. Yeah, not to the point of like asking straight up like that. You're like, yo, you should patch up. But at the same time, they're always they're always coming at you with whatever it is is going on. So whatever politics their beliefs are, and, and believe it or not, man, like I had this one dude that I was in there with that was armed. That was his name was Tommy, young kid, and this motherfucker predicted a lot of the shit that's going on in the world right now. Like it's really weird to me that, that I was shutting him up at that time and being like, "Yo, that shit's crazy. You're, you're whatever." But then when I see it happening, I was like, "This little twenty-two year old kid had some knowledge, man." But yeah, they was always spitting something at you, um, trying to get you to, you know, to do whatever they wanted you to do. You know what I mean? Ever feel a brotherhood with them dudes, though? We Absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Dude, I still got a couple of cats like that I was in. I had a celly. He wasn't part of no gang either. I still talk to him. Um, and then I got another dude that he was part of all that. Uh, crazy story, but uh, he was my celly for a while. He's still in. I think these dudes like it, bro. I think they enjoy being inside. There was another dude we was in with that signed up with the Aryan Brotherhood when I was there, and his name was Quick. Did you ever hear about Quick? Big old white dude. I don't know who Quick is. Okay, so Quick, the reason they called him Quick is he was 6'4", he was a monster, but up here he was about 12 years old. So the whole Quick thing was just, you know what I'm saying, a play on words. Um, but when the, when there was a big old thing that we had out there, Quick was the one that, that jumped it off when he busted old No Nose Rick in the face. You hear about that one? When the DWB got run off the yard. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. So that one right there is when they were shooting at us and shit. So that was definitely another scary ass experience. And you didn't have no choice because every white boy on the yard was there. Like since this was politics between one right white group and another white group, they got every white boy to come out on the yard. During a rainstorm, dude, there was all the only black dudes on the yard was the guys that work wreck. That was it. And that's not normal. Why do, think they, why do you think these other white groups didn't like the DWBs? Well, at that time, from what my understanding is, they were uh, they were extorting dudes. Like, there was a white dude who was running a ticket. They was extorting him. Um, they had stole some shit from a dude at a store, and their numbers were growing. Like, they had got to the point where they were they had more numbers than any of the other guys. It's just That's the narrative that a lot of other white groups would paint a, a, on, um, on, on the DWBs, right? Um, not always true, but you know, it was kind of like the DWBs, we were, they were, were like, you know, at the top. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, they were at the top, bigger than the ABs, because they there weren't any ABs really anymore. I mean, there's a few here and there. You want a yard, there might be one AB, there might be none, there might be two, there might be, you know, like in Big Sandy, there might have been three. So, you know, I think that people are like, nah, man, them dudes think they're, you know, whenever you're at the top, there's always people that want to knock you down and people that want to take you down or whatever. But that that that's that's the scoop on that. That's the real scoop. You know, all DWBs weren't all scumbags, you know? No, all for sure. There was a, several of them dudes that I liked, bro. Absolutely. And there was several of the AB or the AC or the arm dudes that I liked. And there was several of them I didn't like. But that didn't fucking matter, bro. They're in your house. You have to deal with these people. Let me ask you this, right? Um, You ever have to put in work? I mean, you said you've been on the yard a few times. You're a big old boy. Nah, other than, the, other than going out with everybody that time. And then we were kind of teamed up. You know what I'm saying? And again, bro, I'm a dumb fucking kid because at this point in my life right now, I'd have been like, fuck that, bro. I ain't have nothing to do with y'all. So anyways, they kind of teamed us up, 2 on one 2 on one You know what I mean? And then pops the shit pops off. It's raining. The shit just went crazy. I really didn't end up in too much of an encounter. Like, we were standing there fighting, and James kicked the dude, tried to kick the dude, fell down in the fucking water, and then the dude came over. Next thing you know, bullets are going off. So once they start shooting them rubber bullets, bro, I was gone. I was gone, fuck you, I'm out, I'm out. And then the next thing you know, while I'm over against the fence, I look up at that motherfucker right there in the middle of the yard, and he says the next rounds are live. 
Next round's out of this gun's live, bro. What? I'm gone. I'm gone. It's all teamed up. Who are you attacking, the DWBs? Yeah, man. Yeah, because my boy Arvis that I was in the cell with was wanting to go against this one dude that he didn't like. So he's like, yo, it's me and you, it's me and you. And again, man, young and dumb, bro. So I just went out there. Like, so I didn't do much. Honestly, I didn't do much. I didn't get hit. I didn't even hit him off up. But I was there just like everybody else. Uh, you were faking at the highest level. No, I'm just fucking around. And no, honestly, though, pretty much. Pretty much, bro. I was just going along to get along, bro. Like, I knew if I was in this situation, I said no, that was going to fuck me up. That was going to fuck my status up. So I had to go. Now, if it would have been, a, if things would have worked out differently and I would have had to get in, I was in the mix. I was there to do it. But the way things worked out, I got to get the fuck out of there, which I was lucky for, dog. I was, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I was lucky. I'm not a gangster. I am not a violent person. I am not a fucking gangster. Well, you strike me as a dude that might have been, you know, a dude that was making some noise. You're a big dude. I first seen you, even my boy seen you. He's like, yeah, that's a big ass white dude, bro. And, and and bro, like, I've always been able to use that for my uh, advantage, just being big. But I'm just not that guy, bro. I'm a big fucking teddy bear, bro. Say this, right? Because a lot of people don't understand this. You know, they watch these prison videos. Believe me. There's people, you know, we're going to do a video on Donnie LaFon and, and Sack Blue who ends up killing, you know, dude in Atlanta. And I, you know, I got some interview with Donnie um, that's going to come out. But there are some real gangsters in there. But a lot of times people don't realize that there's a lot of people in federal prison that are really, like you just said, man, just going along to get along, right? A lot of dudes ain't really looking for that. But you live in this environment where you have to be a part of this violent animalistic type of nature in federal prison right absolutely absolutely and that savage part of us i guess it's all in us you know what i mean i still react some ways you know what i mean like i i, I still respond with that fuck you shit sometimes and i'm not even that guy bro be honest with you i'm just not that guy but it's still something that was instilled in me because the aggression is respected and if you're not aggressive in federal prison you're just not going to be respected period you know, a lot of people, you know, I, I'm the same way. I'm aggressive when I probably don't even need to be, but I think it's from the years of being in prison, right? What was the worst thing you ever seen in there, man? Me? Ain't thing? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I think it was probably the shame thing was probably one of the worst things I've seen for sure, bro. Uh, yeah, that was just that, you know, and it was a combination of all that shit, bro, between the Border Brothers thing, being shot at on the yard, and then she, be seeing Shane get fucked up. That was just three things that I seen that I was close to within the two years I was there. There was another time when uh, there was some gang shit going on. It was between all the blacks. So we're over on the softball field and, you know, way over here on the other side of the yard, boom, boom, four people going at it. They're stabbing. All the COs run over there to that spot of the yard. As soon as the COs get over there, now they're stabbing over here on the handball court. Stab, stab, stab on the handball court. Now they get over there. Now they're stabbing over there where they play cards right in the middle. So, you know what I mean? Seeing that shit, bro, I was so glad I was so far in the corner of the yard of the softball field when that shit went down because that was crazy shit too, boy. Them, them dudes got fucked up. And you've been out of jail, what, maybe 13 years or something. Do you think that seeing that stuff is what got you out of prison? You're like, yo, I don't never want to experience that again. What changed you? Man, it did, bro, but uh, being clean is what keeps me right, bro. If I'm clean, I don't go to jail because I don't commit no crimes. But as soon as I start getting fucked up, that's when I got to do dumb, cruddy shit to get my dope. You know what I'm saying? So that's another reason for my channel, too, man, is because I want to be held accountable for what I do. You follow? So by doing this, it's somebody else to hold me accountable. I hold all my friends accountable. Motherfucker, you're late. I'm holding you accountable. You know what I'm saying? You told me you're going to do something. You didn't do it. I'm going to hold you accountable. And I want people to treat me the same way. You know what I'm saying? If I don't want to fake to nobody. I'm 100% real, bro. I'm usually always on time. But I wasn't on time for you today or yesterday. And we ended up doing it today. But I apologize, bro. So don't hold me too much. <laughs> right? I'm holding your job right now. And for real, uh, another part of that that comes in, man, that I will say is I did the drug program on my way out of prison. And that really helped me a lot because... Even though that situation was totally different, it wasn't based on race, it wasn't based on any of that shit. So that's down to a medium from the high. So I go down to the medium at Butner, they got weights, bro. So I kept my nose clean after being on a hot list for smoke of weed and all that shit. I kept my nose clean for a year because I wanted to get to a weight pile. That was my thing. So when I got there, I did the drug program and I killed it. So I either had the choice to get 
put back every time so I could stay on the weight pile for the rest of my bid. Or I could crush this program, become a mentor, and get paid to stay there. So that's what I did. I crushed it. They made me into a mentor. I started working there. So as I'm teaching the things that they taught me about how to think, it's not just about drugs. It's about my reaction to what you say. It's about my reaction to what they do. That's the only thing I can control is my response. And once I learned that, it, it helped me a lot. Now, do I still fuck up? Absolutely. I'll cut some motherfucker out in a heartbeat and then be like, damn, if I would have thought about that, I was wrong. You know what I mean? I was wrong. Try to apologize for being wrong. But that that's the first way I started to hold myself accountable because I didn't care, bro. I stole for what I stole for. I did what I did. Fuck you if you didn't like it. That's how I felt. Well, you know what, man? Now you're free. You've been free a long time, doing the right thing. You got your channel going. You know, what advice would you give someone that's on the wrong path, bro, the path that you were on? Uh, man, uh, listen to the motherfuckers that know something, bro. Another thing I did in prison when I was in there is I always hung out with the old heads, bro. The old heads was my favorite dudes to hang out with. There was this cat, Polly Ch Chartier. 43 years or some shit he did in there. He got out. Me and him was homies. Two years. We we cleaned the floors together. We ate breakfast together. We walked to chow every day. Great guy, bro. Like, this was like somebody left my dog when this cat left. Like, I'm crying. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucked up when my man leaves. But the knowledge that them older people can instill in you is something you need to listen to. Because you don't always have to get burnt. If I tell you the motherfucker's hot, bro, don't touch it. Don't touch it. You don't have to touch it. And people told me that. My dad told me not to do this. My people told me not to do that. You're going to regret this. Fuck you. I didn't listen. And everything they said was true. I mean, that's that's the reality, right? Sometimes, man, we, we want to touch the fire. We don't want to listen. We don't want to be like, oh, shit, dude touched the fire already and he got burned, so maybe I shouldn't. But you know what? Let me touch it, too. And sometimes you get burned, and the burn is 20 years in federal prison, 30 years, life sentences. Yeah. I mean, this is the reality of touching the fire. But anyway, man, you know, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show, man, sharing your stories, your experiences. Tell the people where to find you, man. I'm going to tell people, go check out the dude's channel. You can tell from talking to you that you're intelligent. You make people laugh. You, you, you just come across as a as a pretty good dude. And I want people to support you, man. He's trying to get that thousand subscribers. Let's help this brother out today. Hit that subscribe button for him. Tell him where to find you at, Jamie. Fuck yeah, brother. That's awesome to hear. I'm glad to hear that, bro. I appreciate you having me, number one, man. But on YouTube, it's Monkey 1606 and then my name on everything else. TikTok is Jamie Folds 01. Instagram is Jamie Folds. Facebook is Jamie Folds. You know, my Facebook page is kind of like more where I do just like personal shit and my tattooing. So you can go there and look at any of my tattoo stuff. But then like Insta and TikTok and YouTube, that's just where I'm going to be putting up content. I just upgraded everything too, man. So I'm getting ready to start dropping a lot of shit. That's what's up, man. I, you know, I wish you the best and I hope you succeed. I hope people go check you out. I mean, just the name, right? When we seen that shit, bro, me and my boy were like, spanking monkey, what the? I mean, that makes you, you know, right away, it makes you be like, damn, I'm going to find out, you know, who the hell is this dude? And when we left, my boy was like, hey, man, when that comes out, man, on that EM Big thing, man, send it to me, bro, because he was interested in your story. But again, man, I definitely appreciate you, man. You've been through some things. You've done some things. Maybe someone can learn from you. If you like what we do, hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe. We promise not to disappoint you. With respect, load on the Razor Wire TV until tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,